Now that is a good looking bike. That's not mine. Oh, it's mine. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, no clawed this morning. He was on a late start, or maybe just on holiday. Oh, smoke on the key. Well, it's nice. And don't ride off the key. It's a bit breezy here, actually. There she is. Right, let's find somewhere to go. <coughs> Same as usual, still in bed. Oh, I had to go wake him up. There he is, there's Claude. down here I'll say hi I've not seen it for ages Oh, bird. Hello, bird. Hello. Hello. I have seen you for a long time. It's just everything's been all go. For you as well? Yeah. How is life?
Well, that was nice. I needed, needed that to catch up with Claude. Oh, it's got some very exciting news, which I can't tell you about. I can only tell it to my closest friends. But what Claude would like to do, is he's got an old C90, but he's not had it out for a few years. So he'd like to... <coughs> he'd like to invite me down for an evening or a day or something, and we'll get his C90 going. You know, just... Uh, We'll change the oil, clean out the carb, swap the air filter and uh, the front mud guard rubs on the front wheel because it's got uh, bigger, beefier tyres on it. So we'll do a little bit of gent gentle bending about and uh, get him out on it again. So now I think I'm going to head towards sort of bit for direction and make a decision from there where to go. filtering opportunity there. I'll take that, thank you very much. Yeah, like I said, it's the bit of a bike show tonight. I'm not going to bother polishing Hetty this time. So now I'm just going to turn up to meet people. I don't think that's a Harley in front. I'm going to guess and say it's either a Yamaha or a Suzuki. I actually think it was a victory. I don't know anything about those. And quite frankly, I'm not interested either. <laughs> not into the cruising style bikes. Not at not my time of life anyway, maybe one day, but not yet. <coughs> Today is the kind of day where we want to find uh, like some good views in the background to get some, get some nice shots of Hetty. I've had uh, one of the uh, views I had from, oh, I can't remember what the place was called, was it Buckman Brewer? I think it was. I took a really nice photo of it then. And I've just had that back, uh, a picture that I took. I had it printed off and then I had it framed. It took about two months to get it framed. I don't know why 
why it takes them so long. But it's done. I love it that much. I'll put it above the bed. Pride of place. Now I'm just nip to the front here. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's something I was talking about last time, about doing some uh, advanced riding techniques. Let's see if we can give you an insight into what I look for when I'm either riding or driving. Let's start off with the rear view mirrors. So not only am I having a glance in the mirrors, I'm also asking myself, what can I see? What is the person driving or riding? What are they doing? Are they paying attention to what's in front of them? Or are they on their phone? Are they on the smoke? Or are they arguing with the kids in the back? You know, asking them what, ask yourself what you can see. Now, what car is it? What colour is it? What age are the people driving it? You know, you, what, what you're trying to do is uh, exercise your brain. Trying to make it think constantly and that for me is what makes driving and riding you really stretching your observancy as much as you can like right now i've got nothing i've got a like a marine colored car that's about 200 yards away so that's of no consequence to me i've got a head here so we've got that white car in front that's just pulled out didn't look, didn't look like she made much of a glance before she pulled out so it's things like that you've got to watch out for never assume what people are going to do never ever assume you've got to assume that they're idiots looking at every single junction oh, this woman that's not even looking And I'm going to go straight over, I think. You'd be surprised how many people don't know how to use a roundabout. But that, that, that's a lot of what it comes down to for me. Just assume that everyone's an idiot and doesn't know what they're doing. Whether they do or not, I don't care. But you just treat them as though they don't know what they're doing. And be prepared for them to do absolutely anything. few blips of the throttles there make your presence known spending just a, an extra half a second there gives people a chance to actually see you because I am wearing dark colours so that has to be taken into consideration makes it difficult for people to see me although this is a 2018 bike which means that the headlights and the rear lights are constantly on so that will help with uh, making yourself a bit more visible to other road users. <laughs> now, as far as this and the road itself is concerned, you are free to use as much of the road as possible. And I don't just mean this side of the road that I'm on, I mean the opposite side as well. going over a roundabout for example as long as I'm looking in my mirrors to make sure no one's overtaking me I'll see if I can uh, make an example of this later but as long as I'm making sure that no one is in the uh, inside or outside lane around me I'm free to use all lanes of that roundabout and that is completely legal and the same goes for here as well I'm free to use both sides of the road you know safely making sure you can see far enough ahead on coming vehicles when I'm going around the corner I want to be heading towards the apex of the corner and the apex is well like, not the middle of the corner which is about you know here on the pavement and on the inside it's about here on the 
white line. You know, I've got a fly in my mouth. So I'll see. If I can find a suitable stretch of road, I'll just be able to show you what I'm babbling on about. <laughs> Turn right down here, so I'm looking in my mirrors to see if there's anyone behind me who may not have seen me. Looks like they're indicating to go this way as well. Yeah. But then, again, that's the kind of questions that you're asking yourself. Not only can you see something, but what are they doing? So I now know that there's a car behind me, so that's something good to know. So here's... Uh, Here's my cornering that I was talking about. So, before I'm approaching the corner, I'm going to head to the left hand side of the road and then head towards the apex. And what that is doing, that is creating the straightest line around the corner. If you go all the way around the outer side of it, that's if you like a, a longer way of going around the corner. It will use up more uh, rubber on your tyres. Taking the straightest line will make your riding so much more smoother. So, outside and then further towards the inside. And just there, I uh, took over that I, I crossed the corner. I'm using both sides of the road as much as possible because it's safe to do so. <coughs> and by doing that, I'm using a, a far straighter line. And by looking at that constantly, that helps you... Well, I, I find it kind of fun in a way, to be honest. But by doing that, that makes... That, well, it gives you something to do while you're driving. So it makes you more uh, aware of what's in front of you and going on around you. And also by taking the straightest line as well, that'll help to use your brakes less too. So it's, it's known as progressive driving, it's also uh, economical driving because of your, you're uh, using the tyres less, they're not going, uh, they're not doing as much distance because you're taking the straightest line and you're using less, uh, well creating less brake wear as well. I'm not going to get onto fuel economy because as you can tell I like, to, I like to open the throttle a lot just because I can, because it's fun. You know, this isn't a daily vehicle for me, this is my fun bike. So I'm looking directly ahead to see what's coming. Nothing coming, so I'm using as much of the road as possible. I'm creating a nice straight line over the corner. around this corner this road is going to open up a bit more I will be able to see more into the distance of what's coming so not only am I looking you know tens of feet in front of me I'm also looking into the distance to see what cars are coming on the horizon <laughs> the hedges are quite overgrown at the moment so that doesn't really help Looking, yeah, not just in front of me, but as far ahead as possible. As to what's coming next, give me an idea of what to expect. And that also goes for road signs as well. Always read your road signs. It tells, that tells you everything to expect. Like for instance, we've got this uh, uh, zigzaggy sign. Tell me we've got some nice S pens right here. These were a lot of fun. Let's go up here. I've not been up here for a while. Towards the Buckland Brewer. Just little, little tips like that. I mean, <coughs> advanced driving is far more extensive. Now you can get into things like vanishing points and all sorts. But this is just... Yeah, some of the things that keep me interested and some things that make me want to keep doing it more. I, uh, I, uh, I, 
appreciate that to me that's just too boring. I get it. But for me that changed the way I drive and ride forever. Yeah, this was that corner I was talking about where I took a noise filter of Hattie. I might take another actually because it's a stunning day. Oh, look at that. Look at that. And loads of uh, corn behind us as well. I think that's likely to be used for animal consumption rather than human. feed for the winter but anyway yeah I'm gonna take some pictures while I'm here because it's a stunning stunning day beautiful view welcome to Dev you know what I think I've forgotten the GoPro batteries again I, I remember taking them out of the charger I'm not sure what I did after that uh, I don't know we'll out I'll check all my pockets Oh, such a dumbass sometimes. But that was a great view with the drone, that turned out really well. Talking to who was it? Was it a random? It might have been a random guy I was talking to actually uh, about motorbikes, and he says he was uh, outside a pub. Well, it wasn't Buckland; it was Monkley. What was it he said? He said just outside the pub in Monkley. We might end up there in a bit actually. Um, <laughs> There were a group of builders who found a there's the one they found a dead squirrel. It, it is a good joke, play with me. <laughs> he uh, they found a dead squirrel by the side of the road. So one of them stuck a twig up its ass and a fag in its mouth. <laughs> and they uh, stuck it in the ground just outside the pub. Uh, oh, I, I, th this was this was done at a time long before smartphones, so nobody had a camera on them. But the amount of people that were pissing themselves with laughter and then crashing into the houses around them, it was absolutely hilarious. I'm just, just a real shame this guy didn't have any pictures of it, but I think they were either builders or scaffolders. But yeah, to have a, <laughs> a dead squirrel with a stick up its ass and a fag hanging out his mouth, you, you could imagine what it looked like. That's the kind of fun you should be having these days. Ah, oh, look at these roads. Yeah, this is what we come for. I've been here a few times before, but it's still one of my favourites. what uh, just about to turn September now you know so I'm keen to get as many 
riding as possible until it turns into, well, Christmas. <laughs> Still looking into getting a motorbike for the winter. I still have my heart set on a uh, Triumph Tiger. It's more than likely a 1200. Maybe about this sort of year, you know, 2018. I really don't fancy using uh, Hetty over the winter in the salty roads and stuff, you know, I, I want to keep her at her best. But uh, we'll see what happens anyway, that's... It's just, it's just been a thought on my mind for, I don't know, about six weeks or something, it's just... I think that might be a nice thing to do in the winter. I've got loads of things in the workshop to do over the winter as well. Still got the soapbox to make, got some engines to fix, things to build. Oh, and of course, uh, Rotti as well, he needs uh, reassembling and modifying as well. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens anyway. Yeah, beautiful little patch that. But we've been there before, so I'll uh, carry on. Look for the nice places. We're now heading to, I can't remember the name of it, but it's where the the, uh, the gnome sanctuary used to be. Then we get loads of garden gnomes. In fact, this will tell us actually. Putford, yeah. Putford, four miles. Well, they had, well, I don't know, probably about an acre of land that was. Um, what would, you, what would you call it? It was inhabited by well, I don't know, a few hundred uh, garden gnomes. Fortunately, they've sold up since they've uh, retired. The gnome uh, sanctuary, or no, I think it is it a sanctuary. I'm sure that's what they called it. But anyway, they are now at Mary uh, Mary Harriers, which is near Clavelli, and by all accounts. It's uh, just as good, if not better, than before. And there's uh, nice food to eat there too. They've sort of incorporated it into their garden centre that they already had there. What have we got here? Where are all these signs going? They seem to keep being smashed off. And now we don't know where we are. Well, I'm not done yet, so we'll head a bit deeper. Let's go straight ahead, head away from what we know. And find something we don't know. We've got about a week and a half and then all the kids are back at school so the park should be a little bit quieter. It will be quite quiet after October. That's when people start thinking more about Christmas. Which is nice. All of the building work on the park will be underway so I'll have a little bit less to do. Which will make a change. to spending a lot more time in the workshop. So I've barely been in there at all since probably about February. <coughs> I did a little bit but you know, not done much. I don't like it when this GoPro battery runs out and you haven't got another one. You kind of feel naked and exposed <laughs> to you know accidents and whatever and you hate to see something happen that you didn't record. 
so yeah, I'm always keen to make sure I've got spare batteries on me, but I can't for the life of me think where I put them. I might have put them in the in the bag, or I'll have to check. But yeah, that's annoyed me that I've done that again. No idea where we are. I have been here before. the last time I went there. But this looks far better. But yeah, that was it. It was a very cloudy day. But no, it's not. It's very sunny. bearing so headed more towards Torrington sort of way so I think that's where we're going that sort of direction Walsery so that's like on the edge between Torrington and Clavelli sort of direction which I haven't done much of so we should see something new Quiet today. Just what you want. Been there plenty of times. <laughs> Don't know what's ahead though. Hmm. There you go, and then let's go across the cafe grid. Bit like a safari park. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm going to pull over now and smoke and see if I can find these GoPro batteries. Uh, yeah, go on. I must park myself in the shit. Ah, forgot them. Like an idiot. <laughs> I don't 
down to about 30% now, so I'll, uh, I'll just carry on till I run out of battery. Might see some random cattle wandering uh, down the road, but we'll see. later on this evening after dinner I'll uh, take you to the bike show as well it wasn't a fantastic turnout last time because the weather was meant to be pretty crap it, it was fine for the whole meet but it wasn't until I was halfway home I only live about two miles away but halfway home it chucked it down absolutely chucked it <clears throat> so hopefully this time now we'll do nice weather should be round in theory. There might be, even be someone, or should we say other people, who recognise Eddie. Well, uh, we'll see what happens. Cottages down here and small holdings. Yeah, just what you want. Ah, oh, these are nice roads. This is where you want to be riding like an old bicycle or something, or, or a very old Bonneville. You know, it'll be right at home. I don't want it down A roads, that's just boring. I've been a bit of an affair. Tree surgery. to a main road in the distance. <coughs> Downmore Cross. Now that's confusing because I would have thought Biddeford was towards the right, but it's not. I don't know where we are. Yeah, confused.
across this uh, like Chevier sort of way. Ah, I got you. So that's why. Oh no, it's not got Unicorns, yeah, right, it takes you to Chevier. Nothing there, nothing to see. in the distance <laughs> making more cows
So whenever you're approaching a junction and you see a car waiting to come out, you make sure you can see the wipes in their eyes. And you know that they've seen you. It's a bit hard to tell when they're wearing sunglasses, but... Well, that just proves my point. You need to make sure that they can see you. Don't risk it. See if we're still recording. Yeah, we are actually. So, it's most probably this pub I was talking about earlier. You know, the squirrel with a twig up his ass. <laughs> I bet it was this one. So, if you see any damaged property around here, you'll know why.
be a few heartless tonight, no doubt. I love the sound of them, but it's just the fact they don't go around corners at all. That's just not for me. The corners are the best bit. Today, I might just give her a wash anyway. Oh, we are nearly lunch time. Dithery old deer in front. Seems to look in, it seems to be looking everywhere but where she's going. So you have to ask yourself, does she know where she's going? Is she gonna turn off at a moment's notice without indicating? Just all these little bits to keep thinking about. Nothing behind me at all. I'd rather just overtake her and get her out of the way, you know what I mean?
busy, busy. Road positioning is one of my favourite things to think about as well. All right. Ready. <laughs> All right. Especially when you're overtaking vehicles, I, I want to stay right in the centre of the road as much as possible to take up as much space. You know, make a presence. You don't want to be squeezing through traffic. Have, you know, people squeezing past you, you don't want that, you want to make a presence. Okay. This road is mine to use as well. I don't want to put myself in a position where I could be made vulnerable. I try and uh, I try and make an example of that another time. So you can see what I mean, you know, this is all just words, but if you see it for yourself, it'll make a lot more sense. To the bike night. I'm a bit early though, so I don't think there'll be many there yet. Starts at six, it's twenty to six. wrong, there's a few there already. Yeah, there's a few. I messed that up, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, Two, 2.3 I think. Massive. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> How cool is that? That's brilliant. I've heard about it, but I've never seen it before. There's a proper Bonneville. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's brilliant. 1800. Look at, look at the headers on it. Now that is a good looking bike. That's not mine. Oh, it's mine. <laughs> that was cool. That was really cool. Very busy as well. The highlight of the night was getting to meet one of my subscribers, which was really cool. I never, never had that before. Her name is Lily. I'll uh, put a picture up of her for you in a sec. Yeah, she was, uh, yeah, very sweet. I believe she's uh, halfway through her CBT training at the moment, so she'll be, she'll be able to get a motorbike with uh, uh, an L plate up to a 125. be able to start enjoying the open road but yeah well, I let her have a, a sit on Hetty while she was here you know it's uh, be a bit criminal not to seeing as she's come down specifically to to see her but otherwise yeah there was uh, I could believe it there was three Triumph rockets there massive things they are and that big scary BMW looking thing yeah quite a few Triumphs <coughs> well, I enjoyed that. I think there's going to be one more next month, and that'll be it for the end of the year. It'll just uh, be a bit chilly for these summer bikes. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much for watching this episode. Um, I don't know what or when or the next one will be or what it will be on, but we'll find something to do. It's, it's mostly weather dependent, to be honest. If it's uh, sunny, we'll be out on this. If it's wet, we'll be in the workshop. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. And uh, fingers crossed, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much.